This is the Canon XC10. It's the camera that I use when I don't want to bring out the C100 Mark II. It's a sort of a somewhere between a DSLR and somewhere between a camcorder. Fixed lens, but still somewhat of a cinematic image. Now, the subject of this video, it can do 1080p and it can do 4K, and I want to see if it's worth shooting in 4K, because there are several things you have to deal with. Mainly, there is the increased file size, so you have to actually store the 4K files, and you also have to be able to edit the 4K files, which means you need a more powerful computer. Not to mention you need to be able to carry around more SD cards or CFast cards, and you use up more battery life too. Now, you might imagine that going from 1080p to 4K would result in files that are four times larger. After all, 4K is four times the resolution of 1080p, and in some cameras, I guess Yes, that is the case. However, the XC10 does 35 megabits per second for 1080p, and for 4K it does 305 megabits per second, which is nearly nine times larger. So I want to see if this jump in, well, massive jump in file size is worth it. So let's have a look at some footage. Now the light was changing quite a lot when I shot these tests. I've done my best to try and keep it all consistent, but if the color temperature or the exposure shifts suddenly, it's not some weird 1080p 4K thing, it's just that the sun was up and the clouds were being blown manically across the sky. First of all, I was actually really impressed with how well the 1080p held up to the 4K. In fact, it almost looks like there's a similar level of detail, it's just that the 1080p is a bit soft or out of focus. I think this might be down to Canon's honestly quite spectacular downsampling where they take a 4K image and downsample it to 1080p. It's the same thing that the C100 Mark II does, and doing that they are able to create a really very detailed 1080p image. I mean you can see in the side by side here that there's not a whole lot more detail in the 4K image, it's just that the detail that is there is an awful lot sharper. Interestingly, it definitely depends on how much stuff is in shot, which really shows the effect of the compression. For the shots with a shallow depth of field, because of the way compression works, with the background being nice and blurry, the uh, camera doesn't need to dedicate that much data into processing the background, because it's just sort of a smeary green thing, so all of the detail, or the detail from the bitrate, can be concentrated onto the subject, in this case the swing. So if you look at the detail in the rope, it's actually very, very similar. However, if we look at some more landscape shots where you've got more stuff in focus, then the detail becomes much more pronounced. In a similar result to the shallow depth of field versus normal depth of field, when you start moving the camera, the uh, 4K files also extend their lead too, because once the camera is moving, it's much harder to compress. When the camera's sat on a tripod, the, uh, when the camera's processing the image, it can go, right, well, this tree is the same place it was in the previous frame and the frame before that. So it can make a lot of optimizations to reduce the amount of detail required to encode things, whereas when the camera is moving around, it's just a much harder image to encode. And in the real world, a lot of your shots are going to involve camera movement, not just a camera stuck on a tripod, so that's worth bearing in mind. In terms of low light, the 4K image, well, there's a bit less noise and there's more detail, although it's not a huge difference. It might be very hard for you to see the difference though, because YouTube compression can kill a lot of the difference when it comes to noise and grain in low light shots. As you may expect, the higher bitrate 4K files are definitely easier to grade than the 1080p ones, although that's for more involved colour grades. The very basic corrections I did for the footage in this video, there really wasn't any significant difference. So what are the conclusions from all of this? Well, 1080p is definitely good enough, especially high bitrate 1080p. If you can get something that's over 100 megabits per second, that's enough detail for most things, especially if you're just going to put stuff on the internet. If you can't afford a 4K camera or you don't have a particularly powerful computer or not a lot of storage space, then do not let that stop you from making something. Just go ahead, do it in 1080p, and don't worry that you're missing out on a whole other experience because you don't have 4K. Now, all that being said, does that mean that 4K is pointless? 
No, it doesn't. You can definitely see a difference, especially if you have even higher bitrate than 305 megabits per second. If you're shooting 4K, RAW, or just a really high flavor of ProRes, then that's going to be a really nice image. So if you do have the budget for a 4K camera and the 4K post-production, then it is worth going for 4K.